Hi, this is Sandra. Hi, this is Peter. And we're Medievalist.net, and today we're talking about the second episode of Game of Thrones, uh, entitled The King's Road. So in this episode, uh, basically, Ned heads south with uh, King Robert and his retinue. Uh, Tyrion and Jon head north to the Wall. Um, Daenerys learns how to please Cal Drogo. And uh, lastly, Caitlin investigates the mysterious uh, circumstances surrounding uh, Bran's accident. Okay, yeah, it, uh, it certainly a lot happens in this uh, show. Uh, where do you want to begin with Daenerys? Daenerys. Um, Daenerys's part was really small. This this yeah. show. It's something that she's the very first uh, character you see, and but her little uh, clips are just kind of interspersed with the main story. It's kind of the secondary story. Right. Um, she basically is uh, traveling with the Dothraki horde, and um, you know takes some le lessons, love lessons, from a former um, slave, a gir girl. slave girl who worked in a brothel on how to, you know, please Cal Drogo. And, and uh, that's basically it. That's, that's all that happens with Daenerys, or Danny, yeah. as she's called, um, for this episode. Yeah, you, you get a little bit about the Dothraki kind of life uh, living out on the uh, range uh to me i wasn't particularly impressed with those scenes uh to me it came, you know i was kind of expecting that the thraki were like the huns or mongols and they come across as more of like a native mm -hmm. american uh, uh, uh tribe almost right. and uh, so i wasn't uh, to me it wasn't that uh in they weren't as intimidating in this kind right. of show so this episode um, also next, uh, John and Tyrion head north to the Wall, and this was interesting because we learned a little bit more about the Wall in terms of it's sort of like a kind of monastic um, lifestyle in the sense that once you're in the Wall, you're there for life. Um, you take vows of celibacy, so you don't ever father children. It's always just men. There are no women on the wall. There are no families. Your brothers become your family. They all don black, and they're all called the Night's Watch, and they're up there. Also, uh, we find out that <clears throat> uh, undesirables, so criminals, are. It's like a botany bay mm -hmm. for for Westeros. Yeah. So 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 rapists. Yeah, there's basically two uh, two guys also going up there, and they were convicted. Uh, uh, rape. rape and they had a choice of either a castration or or going to the wall uh, and they say most and they say most people choose castration that's so. what Tyrion quips to uh, John so he just doesn't quite understand mm -hmm. John's penchant for wanting to voluntarily go and serve there even yeah. though um, Ned Eddard uh, tells him that the Starks have served there for th thousands of years and it's an honorable position it's honorable, but it's also kind of a stigma, like yeah. not not something you'd really want to join. You see, like the, to me, it seems like the only people who see it as honorable are the Starks. Uh, the uh, Lannisters uh, uh, they, tease him. Uh, tease him about Jamie teases yeah, him. Yeah, Jamie kind of says, "Oh, you know, good luck up there. It's only for life." And you... Tyrion makes fun of him and says, "Yes, of course. You know, you're protecting the public from you know gobbledygook and ghosts and, and what else and stuff. Your mother, and he, you know, he, your wet nurse told you yeah. these tales. So I mean, yeah, yeah. Like Tyrion's honest. He's like, like, you're a smart guy. He tells John he, that they're all going up there, and he, at one point he says, you're a smart guy. You know, none of this is happening. You know, so, there's so nothing to protect. Yeah, yeah, why are you volunteering? Why are you doing this? And, and we never actually hear what John's response is." Yeah. Um, but we also learned that John seems to have uh, trouble at home uh, with his stepmother. Caitlin hates they, him. But uh, she briefly explains this in a, a scene with Ned where she says, you know, 17 years ago you went south with King Robert and you came back with another woman's child. So, you know, it's common in these books that um, fighting men do sire bastard children, except those bastards are... Never seen. Um, mm -hmm. Ned Stark, being an honorable guy, mm -hmm. brought his bastard home and raised him as his own son, mm -hmm. which is a big rub to Caitlin. So as nice as John is, she just, the sight of him is an ever-present reminder of 
the affair Ned had when he went south. Now you've read the book, I haven't. So like you, you like that that part of the book is a lot more emphasized. You get a lot. Yeah, you get more background in it. Mm -hmm. But I mean that quote where she's like, "You came back with some other woman's son," that just kind of in, for the audience encompasses that. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, and Tyrion's just going up for for kicks just to see what's <laughs> you know. He said he wants to <laughs> piss off the end, <laughs> edge of the world, and you know. Whatever, and just yeah. enjoy the wall. Tyrion is a great character. I'm really enjoying him so far. He seems he, he seems a very shrewd uh, guy. He he knows Smart. that he knows that because he's a dwarf. That if he had if he was like a, he says if I was a peasant I would have been left in the forest to die. But I'm a Lannister. I have uh, I have I have to kind of a, a reputation of a hold, and that's why he's like reading, and you can tell that he's. A much smarter guy than just being this guy that just whores around with women. Uh, although he does that, he enjoys it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he yeah. certainly does. Um, so, so that's John and Tyrion's travels, mm -hmm. um, and then we get to Ned and Rob, and they are heading south. And Rob confides in Ned his serious concern with um, Daenerys and Viserys Targaryen. Um, you know, a rider in the night comes with a note saying that um, Daenerys has married the Dothraki lord Khal Drogo, and Ned's like, so what? And Rob's like, no, not so what. I'm known as the Usurper, and if Viserys crosses the Narrow Sea, they're going to be sympathizers. So they have that discussion on their way to yeah. King's Landing. Yeah, the king is... Uh, like in the first episode, he comes. Across, he doesn't come across as particularly intelligent guy. He's more of this, you know, having fun and enjoying things. Here, uh, you, I get the sense from him that he really knows what's going on, and that's uh, politically he, he's politically astute enough mm -hmm. to to uh, see this, the potential. Mm -hmm. So it's like war is coming, but I don't know from where. And I always think like he has, seems to have some inclination that it's not just the. The, the uh, Targaryens uh, that mm. are are his threats. So. And, and then the other part that uh, you know I wanted to talk about this with mm -hmm. you is Joff. Uh, once they get to King's Landing, there's this scene between well, Sansa, Arya, they're and at Joff. An inn. They're at an inn before they get to King's Landing. So, uh, so like they're at this uh, at this stop over. They call it. They, so we're at the inn. So before they're at King's Landing, but. Yeah, like uh, Joff uh, decides to take uh, Sansa, Sansa for a walk. Sansa for a walk. Um, Joff comes across at, at the start. He's, well, he's trying to be nice. He's trying to be. <laughs> he's trying to show what a nice guy he is to uh, to this his future bride, uh, and he takes and trying to show off. And he, he comes across uh, Arya and the he's a and the pictures and the butcher's boy. Uh, who are having this little play fight with with sticks? And 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 in the end, Nymeria, which is Arya's dog, attacks yeah. Joff, and Joff concocts a lie, and and um, you know they end up wanting to kill Arya's dog, but Arya's smart and sends her dog away. Yeah. So Sansa, and she's an insipid little brat too, yeah. and I hate her because she's trying to get on Joff's good side. Um, instead of coming clean and saving her sister, decides to say nothing. But she pays for it because her dog ends yeah. up getting killed. So Sansa's sort of character comes across as incredibly weak-willed. Uh, very. The, uh, she doesn't stick up for her sister. At the same time, she doesn't stick up for Joff. So he's, she's like, why? You, you don't make a decision. You're that, that, that kind of that weak right. character. Um, I just hate Joff, but that just means that Jackie Gleason, uh, the young man who's portraying Joff is doing a stellar job because yeah. if I hate you that much, Jackie, you're doing a very good job. <laughs> the, Kudos. Good good job. Um, and then lastly, I just want to touch on Kat, or Caitlin Stark, who is investigating Bran's supposed accident. Yeah. And she realizes that it's not an accident um, and and that there's possible Lannister involvement. Yeah, like well, there's this uh, 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 new assassination attempt. Basically, she's uh, Caitlin's uh, with Bran. Uh, there's a fire that gets started uh, somewhere in Winterfell as uh, a ruse. As a ruse to get everyone out of the room, but she stays. Mm -hmm. um, this kind of peasant comes in, uh, says, "Hey, you're not supposed to be here." Pulls out a dagger, uh, fights off with the mother, uh, with Caitlin for a, a few seconds. 
just before he's about to kill Bran, Bran's uh, wolf, wolf jumps, come, up. jumps up, tears yeah. his throat out. Nice, Very graphic, nice and graphic scene, scene with like jugular blood coming out. Yes, that was the death of the, that was the death of the week. So, and, and then uh, yeah. and they they realize well, first of all, is you know why would it be his assassination attempt on a little boy? He why, must have seen something. Yeah, like the the knife, uh, the dagger that this assassin had was way too expensive for him, so he was obviously given it to him. Um, they she quickly suspects this the Lannisters. And that uh, that that Bran what may have been thrown out of, of the, the cab. window, and yeah. she decides to head south without anyone telling, uh, without anyone knowing. And basically, we end off with um, Bran waking up, yeah. and and that's pretty much the end of that episode. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to to episode three. It looks pretty exciting, guys. And yeah. thanks for yeah. joining us. Yeah, like I I think I'm looking forward. What does Brand going to know when he wakes up. What is he going to say? Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm still. I'm not really engaged in the Daenerys plot yet, uh, but uh, I'm. I'm interested to see what's going to happen at the Wall. Uh, mm -hmm. If we're going to learn more about what John is thinking here, um, and I think the plots kind of continue. So we're looking for this uh, for next Sunday at uh, 9 p.m. on HBO and HBO Canada. Join us for next episode's recap. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye.